What's up everyone? Mike here. So hanging out on the mushroom farm. Got a great video for you guys today. Today we're going to do a video on bulk substrate, alright? So I just have a fresh batch of Masters Mix that I just pulled out of my steamer. So this is freshly sterilized or super pasteurized and it is ready to be inoculated, okay? So I have several bags of grain spawn here. This is Lion's Mane grain spawn. This is my Yeti strain, one of my favorite strains to grow. If any of you guys need liquid cultures, my website is in the description box below, so check that out. But today what we're going to do is we're going to inoculate these bags of bulk substrate with that lion's mane grain spawn. I'm going to show you guys my procedure, kind of start to finish, how I like to get these bags totally inoculated. Everything from preparing our spawn bag, cutting open our spawn bag, to actually distributing it that spawn amongst these sawdust bags here, sealing them, shaking them up, and then putting them back on the shelf. Then they go through the incubation process, and then after that, we're ready to put them in the grow room and get some mushrooms. But anyway, today I'm gonna give you guys the start to finish on how I like to inoculate my bulk substrate for growing gourmet mushrooms. Are you guys ready? Let's get it. All right, everyone, so we're gonna get to it right here. Now, I'm just showing you, this is my grain spawn. It's fully colonized, and you're just seeing me break it up right now, all right? So that's one of the first things you do, is you just start getting all your grain spawn together that you wanna use for your inoculation process. I inspect it all really good before I start busting it up. I look it over for any mold or bacterial spots that might just be funny looking, or I might be able to tell might give us a problem. So make sure you inspect your grain spawn really good and then start busting it up once you feel like you want to use it, okay? Now, one thing, when you're breaking it up, bust up all your little clumps and everything like that, make sure you make it like a really nice seed source, basically, so you can inoculate your bulk substrate, and you have all these nice little pieces of inoculum that will kind of float around and act like inoculation points. But you also want to just kind of look it over, make sure you don't see any bad spots in it while you're kind of just busting it up and prepping it. Now, what I'm going to show you here is I got a few more bags of grain spawn, just some more lion's mane. And I actually ended up getting some king oyster that I had in refrigeration that I wanted to use. And I'm just inspecting all my grain spawn bags that I have because I've made these several weeks ago actually. And then I did just decide to put them into refrigeration because I wasn't ready to use them. But now we've decided to use it. We've got some bulk substrate that I just cooked. So we're ready to use this spawn for inoculation. And I will have a video in the future about actually preparing the bulk substrate so stay tuned for that but i'm going to have a video about how i make my masters mix how i load my steamer how i unload it all that good stuff but what i did before i even started shooting this video tonight was i went outside and i unloaded my steam tank and i brought in all those blocks okay and i really just really did cook them outside and bring them right into the lab and uh didn't you don't have to take any precautions. The blocks are actually kind of like vacuum sealed themselves almost because on the cool down, the bags will kind of suck down tight. And you'll see that after you cook a few bags yourself. But I used to have a steam barrel like this or a big steam trough in an old garage. And I did the same thing. And I would basically just cook them all out in the garage and then just carry them right in the lab by hand. And then um, I would go ahead and inoculate. And I actually don't even wipe down the bulk substrate bags with alcohol. I know some guys do, but a few years back, once I first got into this, I decided not to do that. And the only thing I really do, and you'll see what I do here, I'm about to wipe down my spawn bags with alcohol. So after I've got all the spawn bags busted up, and as you can see right there, that millet looks real nice. It's real nice and busted up. These are my millet and vermiculite spawn recipes. So I'll link that down in the description box below. But... I spray down the spawn bags, as, as you can see right here with alcohol. I don't do that to the bulk substrate. The bulk substrate right now is just sitting on a rack behind me, like you saw in the intro to the video. And then as I'm ready to inoculate those bags of bulk substrate, I'll just grab them off the rack one by one and bring them into my work, my work area. But you can see, I just kind of wipe down that bag with alcohol. You can use 70% alcohol. That's good. You might see I've got some like 90% bottles laying around, but I actually just use that 90% and then just dilute it a little bit. And anyway, after you get it all wiped down, it's time to flame sterilize yourself a scalpel. And then we're going to cut the top of that bag off. So there we go. We got that scalpel nice red hot. 
Now watch when I cut this off. Watch the smoke. It's really cool. You can see the flow hood just doing its job. Look at that smoke blow back. So you can see that flow hood is nice and effective. Just imagine if there was like a little mold spore or something that has been coming into the work area. The flow hood will definitely do its job and kind of just keep on blowing it away and let it keep on tracking on. But now watch me. I got a bag of bulk right here. I'm opening it up. Notice I'm opening it up in front of the flow hood. Look how the, the block almost looks vacuum sealed on the substrate base. You see that? That's how they come out of the steamer. Now look at that. I just dump it in there, man. That's all I do. I don't measure it. I'm a, I'm a master eyeballer, so I don't measure it. And then if you also notice, I kind of, I did what's called cracking the block, okay? So I kind of squeezed it. You want to be careful. Obviously, it's risky, but um, that's a good way to get the spawn distributed in there. And then also, it really helps you shake the substrate. The substrate is almost impossible to shake if you don't do that little crack. And now I flip it on its side. I've got my magnetic impulse sealer. You're going to watch me seal the bag. The bag is sealing while it's sealing. I'm grabbing a new block to get it ready to work on. Boom. There we go. The bag is sealed. I'm going to give it a little pressure check. That's good. So now it's time to shake it up. And we're just going to distribute that spawn that we put in the bag throughout the substrate. So that is basically it. And now look, you kind of see that when I laid that block over, I cracked it. I even kind of puffed it up a little bit. And you see how the block almost looks slightly inflated right now? It's nice to get a little air in there. I really like to do that when I'm sealing it because if you do that, it makes your shaking process like 10 times easier. It's much easier to shake a block if you got a little air space in there. And even look, as I'm riding it, it's kind of hard to tell, but the bag, there, there's like, it's definitely kind of almost inflated in a way. That's my favorite way to do it. Now we're just gonna watch me do another one. So I'm just opening it up again in front of the flow hood here. All right, so here we go, getting that bag open. And now I'm gonna get ready to spawn it again. After I spawn it, remember, I crack it. When I crack that block, watch me. I, I'm watching exactly where I put the top of that block. I kind of strategically point it towards the flow hood a little bit, massage the block. Then I'll pull them gussets out. I'll quickly flip the block on its side and then I will seal it, okay? And there's a few things too, I just wanna say real quick before we get done inoculating these blocks and I give you guys a little talk at the end. I just want to say there's all kinds of little tools and things like that mushroom farmers use to make their inoculation process um, faster and even more efficient. Like giant mega farms even have automated things. Sometimes they do inoculate with small amounts of grain spawn or even LC in certain instances. And I know I'm not a fan of using LC to bulk, but I will say there are instances when it is used, but it's kind of out of context for a farmer at my scale with the type of equipment we're using here. And I do want to say there's also other tools. Some guys like to use ladles or spoons or something like that to measure their spawn. I'm totally the type of guy that will pretty much always be eyeballing it. I'm just that type of dude. And I kind of feel like a ladle or a spoon is just another vector for contamination. One thing that I would think that would make my job a little bit easier, though, is a bag shaker. I've made one in the past, but Man of War Innovations is a company that actually makes kind of this new um, bag shaker. I would like to try one of those out on the farm one day. I feel like that's something that could make my process just a little bit quicker. But those are just a few different tools people use to make this process easier. All right, everyone, so that was it. Inoculation of bulk substrate, at least how I like to do it on my farm. And like I said, this is 60-40's uh, master's mix. If you guys have any questions about like kind of what I did today or anything I went over, just please put it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to address that but I'll have plenty more videos about making bulk substrate, my whole steam system and all that good stuff, the incubation process. I'm gonna go over incubation still with you guys, and then we'll have many more videos when we get into the grow rooms over here, all right? But anyway, hope you guys all found this video helpful and informative, and if you did, please drop this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but that's all I got for you on this one, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.